So I just saw Disney's A Wrinkle in Time and it was the worst movie I've seen all year. By the way, spoiler warning for this entire video as though you should even care about that in the first place. By the end of the movie, Scoot and I were struggling to think of even one redeemable quality. All of the acting was terrible, there wasn't a single believable performance throughout the entire film. The little boy who played Charles Wallace was the worst actor in the film. Like yeah, he's a little kid and he sucks, whatever, but you gave him so much screen time. It's kind of detrimental to the film when you can only ever see the actor and not the character. Half of the movie is just watching this poor little kid try as hard as he can to imitate what the adults are telling him to say. It's just uncomfortable and embarrassing. And with an actor like that, you'd almost expect for everyone else's performances to look better by comparison. And I mean, yeah, they were technically better, I guess, but pretty much everybody in the fucking movie gave the worst performances I've seen all year. There are zero instances of convincing dialogue in the entire movie. On top of that, the movie looks like shit. We're supposed to feel like we're in this magical, mystical avatar world or something, but it's all ugly and fake. I don't believe any of it. The effects were terrible despite how much money was obviously thrown at them. It never felt as though the characters were actually in their environment. There's a scene where all of the characters are talking to a giant Oprah in the backyard, and obviously all of Oprah's parts are filmed separately, but I guess they didn't use any sort of markers or references or anything, because every time we see Oprah's face, she's basically looking at her toes, which is not where the children she's talking to are. She's like 45 degrees off. She'll turn to the side to face one of the other characters and she's basically looking at the fucking house. How is there this much lack of coordination here? You'd think that a director would be on top of this shit, right? Apparently not. Oh, and the overall shit look of the film doesn't even stop at the special effects. This film has some of the worst framing and shot composition I've ever seen. There's an extreme overabundance of low angles making everything look really fucking ugly. There's scenes that are shot so uncomfortably close to the actor's face that the top of the frame is their eyebrows and the bottom of the frame is their bottom lip. Like, apparently that was supposed to look really intense, I guess. The film's soundtrack is god-awful. Every 20 minutes we get some shitty pop song that plays over the scene. They never felt as though they actually fit there. It's like they just sold off slots for the soundtrack to the highest bidder. So basically the main girl's dad is missing because he's a super scientist and he's discovered a tesseract and he, I guess, decided to wrinkle through time but nobody knows where he went. It's the four year anniversary of his disappearance and she goes to school and there's a note on her locker saying happy anniversary maybe someday you'll disappear too. Fucking savage. So Oprah and these other ladies teleport her to this other planet and they're like yeah we're gonna help you find your dad because you want him so bad and they also bring along her brother and this other useless character she goes to school with. So they get to this other planet and there's a bunch of flowers floating around that seem to have some sort of sentience and one of the magical ladies is like hey maybe the flowers will know where your dad went and our main character is like, oh, that's never gonna work. We don't even understand them. How's that gonna work? I don't wanna do it. I'm sorry, did you not just magically teleport to another fucking planet? You're not gonna have even a little bit of faith in the suggestions of the people that just teleported you there? Like, maybe they know what they're fucking doing? So eventually she shows the flowers what her dad looks like. She's got this little locket around her necklace, but when she opens it up and shows the flowers, her finger's covering his face, and the movie doesn't acknowledge this. The flowers are like, yeah, we saw him go by here. He went over that way some time ago. I have no clue why the director got her to hold it like that. It doesn't make any sense. Then one of the ladies transforms into this big fucking flower thing and they all go for a ride on her back and accomplish absolutely nothing. Her useless friend from school falls and almost dies. And then they meet up with Zach Galifianakis. And the entire scene, they're all balancing on these weird rocks inches away from falling to their doom. But none of them seem to be concerned about this and it's all really nonchalant. Which kind of fucking contradicts the emotions that you were trying to express in the previous scene. You know, where the kid was falling to his death and we were supposed to care about it in some way. Nah, whatever, heights don't reel. We're fine. So then for reasons that I don't even remember, they're all like, well, looks like we're gonna give up on trying to find your dad. Let's go home instead. So Oprah and her two magical ladies start the teleporting process, but then they get teleported to what is essentially a gigantic wheat field. And Oprah's like, oh, well, we tried to teleport you back home, but you were thinking about your dad too hard and how much you want him back. So we accidentally got sidetracked to this other planet and this is all your fault. You kind of fucking goofed it. 
little girl. This is your fault. Also, I know it totally seems as though we have some sort of infinite powers, but actually we don't, and it's very finite, and we're running out right now. All three of us have existed for who knows how many years, and we all now very conveniently are running out of power at the exact same time. In fact, all three of us have just enough power to bring ourselves back home, but not enough for us to take you anywhere. So good luck. We're leaving you here. By the way, don't trust anything you see. Goodbye. And they just fucking ditch these children on some random planet. Then everything turns into a big forest and they see something in the distance. There's basically this gigantic hurricane wall ripping up dirt coming towards them. They're like, oh no, we'd better run. But the wall's coming at them at like a hundred miles an hour. And they pull that fucking annoying bullshit where the kids are running from it, but they're running at the speed of children. And theoretically this wall should be catching up to them based on how fast it's going. But literally every time it cuts to another angle, they just warp the wall further back as it's still going towards them the same speed, but they're able to get away. Every time it changes angles, it's like they have a new head start. That's annoying. Stop it. Then they run into Michael Pena from Chips, and he's evil and he hypnotizes the little boy. So now this little boy character, who is the worst actor in the entire film, is now evil. Hooray. Anyway, they find the dad somehow, but the little boy's possessed and he's really evil and he takes the girl to this weird thing that's apparently it's the source of all negativity in the world but it's not attached to the world and it's really far away but it travels almost the speed of light but not really like there's this big hive mind that's apparently responsible for anybody who's self-conscious enough to be on a diet and it's making the boy evil but she defeats the evil out of the boy by saying I love you like 10 times like he was trying to kill her I guess but not doing a very good job at it and she was just like no you're my brother I love you so much and he's like no love no and then Oprah and the other two magical ladies come back they're like we're fine now and then they go back home with their dad and everything's fine yay the movie's almost two hours long and it feels like they accomplished nothing like they got the dad back hooray that's it but most of the movie was just filler what did her fucking friend from school do the entire movie all he did was fall once and then eat sand he served no fucking purpose the entire time now I don't even know if I read the full novel when I was a kid I do remember reading a part where they were basically stuck in 2d and then they were explaining the difference between 2d and 3D to the kids, but they were like, I can't breathe because I'm flat. And that's something that stuck with me. From what I can remember, part of the point of the book was to introduce children to intelligent concepts, even if they weren't always represented scientifically. That was part of the fun. You know, you're in elementary school and there's a story that makes you think about wormholes and dimensions, etc. Half of the fun was what it made you think of for yourself. But this movie takes anything that possibly could have been explored as an intelligent concept and instead uses it as an excuse to have some shitty dumb adventure scene where you're supposed to go like wow they're flying on somebody's back oh wow look at all these special effects here the scene that i remembered from the book wasn't even in the fucking movie and nothing that they did include provoked any sort of thought at all there's nothing about it that made you think about anything it was all just boring laughable nonsense it was a pile of garbage it was bad no sir i don't like it thanks oprah and i'm giving this one a one out of ten Thank <laughs> you.